Pay attention, bubs and bubettes. It's time for another Toy Picks photo how to. Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Photo Dave, and this is Toy Picks Channel, dedicated to helping you and helping me get a whole lot better at our action figure photography. So, if that sounds cool to you. Go ahead and click subscribe. Today's video simple. We're going to shoot and edit a picture of this guy, comic book style. Let's just get to it, shall we? Okay, first things first, let's show you the Spidey setup. One, we have the camera. Then we have the Moffex Spider-Man, highly recommended. This is the classic version, love this figure. And here is the reference photo I used to put him in that position, because trying to pose Spidey without reference can get tricky. Now, nah. We also have this Dio from High School Creations, highly recommended Dio maker, a yoga block, and some putty to keep Spidey in place. The reason I'm doing that is because I'll end up taking two shots, one with all that in the photo, the next without all that in the photo, which will make it much easier to edit through layers and Photoshop and all that good stuff. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do that later on. And then we've got this tree that I found at PetSmart, and... A little kneewear light just to kind of highlight the left side a little bit because coming in from the front right a little bit, we've got a giant ring light. Now the reason we use a large light is because I want this to be a daytime shot. And when you want a daytime shot, you want a light that's a lot larger than the subject you're shooting. So that's what's going on there. Now everything I just showed you will be in the video description below. Many of those will be affiliate links, which means I get a commission and can build my Cobra army if you guys use them, so if you're so inclined, I certainly appreciate it. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and shoot this bad boy, and I'll show you how to edit and make it look all comic booky. Okay, folks, here we go. This is the Spidey right here, the one I shot. We've got the top layer. And then we've got the bottom layer. These are the two pictures I took to combine. Now I already did the masking. Now the way you do that, you can see up here where the little red X is on the right hand side in the layers. We'll enable that so you see what's going on. Okay, so that's what masking did. I took out that brick there, the yoga block. Now the way I did that, let's show it again. Disable is you've got the mask here. You select, say, a brush, and you've got black here, right? Now you push the right-hand bracket to make the, make the selection area larger. Come on, right-hand bracket. There we go. And now if I wanted to just erase stuff or mask stuff out, you just do this, and it shows what's on the bottom layer. So that's pretty much what I did to get rid of this bad boy here. Nothing too tough, pretty easy stuff, right? Okay, so let's enable the layer mask again. Now, to give it that comic booky look, I wanna make sure to make it a little brighter, a little more saturated. So what I'm going to do is drop down an adjustment layer. Oops, get brightness contrast. That was the wrong layer, wrong layer. Okay, hue saturation. Leave it on master because that means it'll get everything. And just up the saturation. There we go. Everything on the picture is a little brighter, which I like to see. I want to give it that really nice, bright comic look, so I'm kind of excited about that. So now we'll close that off. I want to make it a little brighter in the white areas too. And what we're going to do there is do the drop down. We'll select levels. And we'll add, wrong way, Dave. It's like I've never done this before. We'll add a little more brightness this way. Does it need a touch of black? Not really, I kind of like it like that. So right there, we've got levels, we've got hue and saturation. Now, one more thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go down here to threshold. And what that's gonna do is make everything black and white You'll see that, and now we're going to adjust this slider, because we don't want everything to be black and white in the image. So we do this a bit, right? 
not too much. We want some lines of the comic there. We want that comic book look there. But we want to mitigate, see if we go like this, things start to look a little sloppy. We want to mitigate that sloppiness. Bring it down a bit. That's pretty clear. Probably still have to do some cleanup work, but there you go. Now select, or set threshold to multiply. And now we can see we've got some blacks in there for kind of the comic booky look a little more. Let's make the levels a little brighter still. Okay, there we go on levels. Now, one last thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going <laughs> to... Don't worry, we're going to race through this part a little bit is I'm going to pop Spider-Man out of the picture by actually giving him a lot of black lines to make him look like the comic book. So he's going to just pop out. I'm going to be doing some outlining and all that. It's just going to be with a simple brush tool. So I'll grab the brush. And just like with masking, you use the left bracket to make the circle smaller, the line smaller and you use the right back bracket to make it larger. So I'm gonna be playing and this part, it's gonna take me a while, but hey, you'll see it in Fast Forward. So, here we go. Okay, there was just some good old-fashioned outlining Spider-Man. I created a couple layers on the right-hand side. You can see did all that good stuff. Had the threshold going. I forgot to mention that the reason I did the threshold was it's a really good guide, but that's it. I mean, we've now got Spidey pretty much popping out all over the place. Everything else is there, but it's not really taking up a whole lot of picture. So all that's left now, to me, is to crop this thing. So let's see what we've got. Let's play a little. Bring in a little there. Keep Spidey off to the side, I think. But keep all of him in frame. I don't think I want to cut off anything. No, I think right about there is pretty good. So there you go, folks. That is kind of making a picture that's a little more comic style. Attention, peons. It is I, Serpentor. Don't forget to click the link in the description, ee.toys slash toypics, to save 10% on all in-stock items at Entertainment Earth, and get free shipping if you spend $39 or more. Help yourself with savings. Help Photo Dave build his Cobra army. This I command! <clears throat> Anybody got a lozenge? All right, we're very close to being done with this bad boy, but first, who remembers Salvador La Roca's art way back when in Extreme X-Men? Now, he might still be doing comic book stuff. I'm not sure. I don't pick up too many these days. I did try King in Black, but it was really predictable, so I started thinking, ah, oh, crap, should I keep reading comics? I don't know. I'm confused. I did like Hickman's X-Men run until Hickman wasn't involved so much, but uh, anyway, I digress. I like Salvador La Roca's look. I like how it doesn't look very inked, but I want to combine that with kind of popping out the main character who does look inked. So that's why we've got Spider-Man the way he is. Now, in order to get that La Roca look, let's play just a little bit more. We're almost done. First off, I'm going to hit Shift, Command, Option, and E. And that combines the layers. So everything we've done, we've already, it all puts it into one layer. And now we're going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to the Filter Gallery. And we're going to check out Ink Outlines. 
I've already got a lot of that all set up. So that looks pretty cool. I kind of like that. Don't worry, Spidey's going to look a little different when we're done. But so I've got the stroke length on, or stroke length on ink outlines to 3. I've got dark intensity to 16. I've got light intensity to 35. Now, you can see here if we pump up, pump down, all that. Okay, let's go back to the 35. And obviously, the more you play, you'll just mess with these settings until you've got what you like. But I'm pretty happy with this. So let's hit OK. Okay, so you see we've got kind of that inked Salvador La Roca look there, which I really kind of like. I think that's cool. But, like I said earlier, I want Spidey to pop out. So, we're going to go to the mask, and we got black selected, and we're going to pop Spidey out a little more. And This time I don't need to worry about being so exact. So we got Spidey all out. He's kind of popped up a little bit like that. We have Spidey here, good to go. But again, I want to give it a little more of that LaRocca look, which would make it so it's a little more washed out, perhaps. It doesn't look quite so inked, but I want to leave Spider-Man inked. So we're going to create one more threshold layer. Okay, still wanna wanna do a little bit, don't want too much in Spidey, but what we'll end up doing is masking out the stuff that shows up in Spidey anyway. Okay, that works. Now, go to Select Color Range, click on Black, hit OK, and now, select it on there, create a new layer, which is tricky, don't worry, it's, it's really not tricky. Now let's just add 50% gray to it. Okay, you see what we've got there now. We don't want it all the way faded. So let's add enough fade to show that there is some fade. And now go back in, do the masking for Spidey. And there we have it, folks. Because we ended up masking out that little threshold area there, Spidey is popping out, but everything else has kind of that La Roca look, where it's a little more painterly instead of inked in the background. So, we finally have this bad boy done. And there you go, folks. Spider-Man swinging into action all comic book style. Now comment below and let me know if you're getting good use out of these videos because videos like this are really why Toy Picks exists. And hey, don't forget to follow Toy Picks on Twitter at Toy Picks because I'll be putting a link up to this video on there and you can comment on the tweet that I put the link up on with pictures of your final results after you've gone through all the steps entailed in this video, it's always cool to see what everybody else is cooking up. And even if you don't go through this, it's always cool to see the pictures you guys are shooting. So comment below on the Twitter page with those shots. And with that, that's all I've got. So until next time, have fun and happy snapping. See ya.